Ostern 8. April 2012 gleich Pascha und dem Abendmahl durch ihr Reverend Bischof Erzherzog Dr. Robert. Le Maxwell Passen de 8. april 2012 is gelijk aan Pasje en het heilige avondmaal doordat hij dominee bischop als hertog. Robert Lee Maxwell Allow me to introduce myself. I am Bishop Archduke Dr. Robert L. Maxwell of the Prophetic Royal Co. Arms Ministry, Duke of Pomerania and Livonia, Colonel of the Royal Guard of Pomerania and Livonia, Field Marshal of the Prophetic Royal Co. Arms Ministry, and night and night of the sacred and military order of merit of the prophet or the Quran ministry today I will be doing a message on Passover let's open up with a word of prayer today We will be taking communion to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. Since it is that time of year and Easter is upon us. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you and ask you to empower us with the Holy Ghost but our hearts and minds to your word your truth concerning this subject that this message minister to us that this be a transforming changing message and your will be done Make my preaching and teaching acceptable to you. We ask this in the Lord Jesus Christ's name through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so, um, get yourself. some bread and some grape juice in a tiny container or
tiny container or something to pour grape juice in at the end of this sermon we will take communion celebrating this Easter now if you will turn over to Acts 12 Gonna look at Acts 12 verses 1 through 5. I'm going to use the authorized King James. This is how this passage reads. Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church and he killed James the brother of John with the sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, now here Jews means those who are descended from the house of Judah or those living in the geographical location of Judah. He proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of the unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to to deliver him to four ends. of of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter, Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. This word Easter in the Greek is Passover which means Passover. So Easter is Passover. We are celebrating Passover this time of year, not Easter. Easter, this is a mistranslation from the Hebrew. I said, I mean, correction, Easter is mistranslated from the Greek into English. It should be Passover, not Easter. Easter, a festival in the Christian church commemorating the resurrection of Christ, celebrated on the first Sunday following the full moon that occurs on, on or next after March 21st to March 21st to this Sunday on which the festival of Easter is held. The word Easter, although the name of a Christian festival had its origins in in pagan times, Estra, Estra, the old English spelling of Easter was originally the name of a Germanic goddess who was worshipped at the festival at the spring equinox. Her name is closely related to the Latin and Greek, both of which mean dawn. Easter is also derived from the same root word as east, the direction or sunrise. So Easter is a pagan holiday. Easter is a pagan holiday that I read is out of the Webster's second new college edition. celebrate Passover on this time of year not 
Easter. Easter is a false pagan ritual and we should not participate in it. We should not participate in it because it is a pagan festival that celebrates the God of fertility and so forth. Christians celebrate Passover, not Easter. Passover is, is the 8th of April. We celebrate Passover. The only we celebrate Passover, not Easter, that commemorates and celebrates a false god, a god of fertility. We celebrate Passover. Passover is not just a Jewish holiday, it is a Christian holiday. So what is Passover? Why do we celebrate it? When do we celebrate it? Passover. We're going to take a look at a description of Passover. Turn over to Exodus chapter 12. We're going to look at verse 6 through 11. Exodus 12, colon 6 11, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Seven, and they shall take of the blood, and strike it on the two side posts, and on the upper door post of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. Eight, and they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire, and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Nine, eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. Ten and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. Eleven and thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. The feast of the Passover was to be an, an, an annual holiday in honor of the night when the Lord passed over the homes of the Israelites. The Hebrews followed God's instructions by placing the blood of a lamb on the door frame of their homes. That night, the firstborn son of every family who did not have blood on the door frames was killed. The lamb had to be killed in order to get the blood that would the lamb had to be killed in order to get the blood that would protect them. This foreshadowed the blood of Christ, the Lamb of God who gave his blood for the sins of all people inside their homes. The Israelites ate a meal of roast lamb, bitter herbs, and bread made without yeast. Unleavened bread could be made quickly because the dough did not have to rise. Thus they could leave at any time. Bitter herbs signifies the bitterness of slavery. We are to celebrate Passover every Easter as Christians. And that is the time when we take communion. Here at this ministry, 
We only have communion twice a year. Christmas and Easter. But the Passover is the official date that all Christians should take communion. Some places take it more than twice a year, more than a few days a year, and that's fine, but we only take it two times a year, communion, on Christmas and Easter. But Easter is Passover. So Passover Sunday is a better word to call it. Instead of calling it Easter Sunday, you should call it Passover Sunday, where we take communion. And so it's that time of year for us to take communion. That is the official date that when Christians should take Passover. All these ceremonies of the old, all the other feasts and celebrations of the Old Testament no longer apply to us because Christ fulfilled the types and shadows of the Old Testament, the ceremonial law, the blood ordinances. However, Passover is the only official celebration that that finds its way in the New Testament. The substance of Passover has been fulfilled. So the types and shadows we don't have to necessarily keep because the types and shadows, the, the substance has fulfilled the types and shadows. Chronicles 30 verse 1. To Chron. 31 And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah, and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh, that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel. Passover celebration commemorates the time that God spared the lives of Israel's firstborn sons in Egypt. God had promised to send a plague to kill all the firstborn sons except in those homes where the blood of a slain lamb had been painted on the door frame. The Israelites obeyed. And when the destroyer saw the blood, he passed over the house, the houses, the houses, and did no harm. Any one in it, Exodus 12:23. After the, this plague, Pharaoh freed the Israelites from slavery. This, celebra this celebration was to be a yearly reminder of how God delivered his people in the careful preparation both in the temple and for the feet shows that this was not a temporary or impulsive revival but a deep seated change of heart and life. This of Passover, the feast of Passover. 
The Passover was to be an annual holiday in honor of the night when the Lord passed over the homes of the Israelites. The Hebrews followed God's instructions by placing the blood of a lamb on the door frames of their homes. That night, the firstborn son of every family who did not have blood on the first at the door frames was killed. The lamb had to be killed in order to get the blood that would protect them. This foreshadows the blood of Christ, the Lamb of God who gave his blood for the sins of all people inside their homes. The Israelites ate a meal roasted of lamb, herbs, and bread made without yeast. Unleavened bread could be made quickly because the dove did not have to rise. Thus they could leave at any time. Bitter herbs is a significant of the bitterness of slavery. Mark 14.1 The New King James After two days it was the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by the trickery and put him to death. The Passover commemorates the night the Israelites were free from Egypt. Exodus 12, when God passed over homes marked by the blood of the lamb while killing firstborn sons in unmarked homes. The day of Passover was followed by a seven day festival called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. This too recalls the Israelites quick escape from Egypt when they didn't have time to let their bread rise. So they baked it without yeast. This holiday found people gathering for special meat, uh, meal that included a lamb, wine, bitter herbs, and unleavened bread. Eventually the whole week became to be called Passover. And when uh, Passover symbolizes death passing over us because we are marked and sealed and sanctified and justified in the blood of Jesus Christ positionally in right standing before God symbolizing spiritual and eternal life that we all receive through the resurrected life of Christ Jesus and being set free and delivered from slavery of sin and death. We now have the ability to choose not to sin. Before we were sanctified in the blood of Jesus Christ, before we were saved, we did not have the ability to choose not to sin, but now being positionally in right standing before God, because we are no longer standing in the filthiness filthy robes of our righteousness, but now we are standing in the righteousness of Christ's clothes, our clothes of Christ. Death passes over us.
and so now we have eternal life, eternal life, spiritual life in the res through the resurrected life of Christ Jesus. Look at Exodus 12:17 and Exodus 12:23. Exodus 12, 17, And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in this self same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day and your generations by an ordinance forever. Exodus 12, 23, For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel, and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door, and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Passover came an annual rem remembrance of how God delivered the Hebrews from Egypt. Each year the people would pause to remember the day when the destroyer, God's angel of death, passed over their homes. They gave thanks to God for saving them from death and bringing them out of the land of slavery and sin. Believers today have experienced a day of deliverance as well, a day we or delivered from spiritual death and slavery to sin. The Lord's Supper is our Passover, remembrance of our new life and freedom from sin. The next time struggles and trials come, remember how God has delivered you in the past and focus on His promise of new life with Him. Exodus 12, 11. Exodus 12, 11, and thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is Jehovah's Passover. Is that a V? Yes, eat that V. Eating Passover while dressed for travel was a sign of the Hebrews' faith. Although they were not yet free, they were to prepare themselves. For God had said he would lead them out of Egypt. Their preparation was an act of faith, preparing ourselves for the fulfillment of God's promises. However unlikely they may seem, however unlikely they may seem, demonstrates our faith. Take a look at Exodus 13, 12 through 14. Exodus 13, 12, dash 14. That thou shalt set apart unto Jehovah all that openeth the womb, and every firstling which thou hast that cometh of a beast, the males shall be Jehovah's. 13 and every firstling of an as thou shalt redeem with a lamb. And if thou wilt not redeem it, then thou shalt break its neck. And all the firstborn of man among thy sons shalt thou redeem. 14 and it shall be, when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What is this, that thou shalt say unto him? By strength of hand Jehovah brought us out from Egypt, from the house of bondage. What did it mean to give over, redeem every first among your sons? During the night that the Israelites escaped from Egypt, God spared the oldest son of every house marked with blood on the door frames because God saved the lives. Because God saved the lives of the firstborn, he had a rightful claim to them. But God commanded the Israelites to buy their sons back from him. This ritual served three main purposes. One, it was a reminder to the people of how God had spared their sons from death and freed all from slavery. Two, it showed God's high respect for human life in contrast to the pagans 
the pagan gods who who their worshippers believed demanded human sacrifice. Three, it looked forward to the day when Jesus Christ would buy us back by paying the price for our sins once and for all. The significance of the first Passover celebrated in the promised land. Let's take a look at Joshua 5.10. Is out of the new living. Joshua 5.10 One of the Israelites were camped at Gilbo. On the plains of Jericho, they celebrated Passover. On the evening of the 14th day of the first month, the month that marked their exodus from Egypt. This joyous Passover was the first to be celebrated in the Promised Land, and only the third celebrated by, the, by Israel since the exodus from Egypt. The last time was in was at the foot of Mount Sion 39 years earlier. The celebration reminded Israel of God's mighty miracles that brought them out of Egypt. There they ate to, uh, there they had, there they had to eat in fear and hate. Here they ate in celebration of God's blessings and promises. Exodus 12. When we celebrate Passover every Easter Sunday, Passover Sunday, we celebrate the blessings and promises that God made to you and I. At Second Kings twenty three twenty one to twenty three. Kings 23, 21, Nash 23. And the king commanded all the people, saying, Keep the Passover unto the Lord your God, as it is written in the book of this covenant. 22, Surely there was not hold in such a Passover from the days of the judges that judged Israel, nor in all the days of the kings of Israel, nor of the kings of Judah. 23, But in the eighteenth year of King Josiah, wherein this Passover was held unto the Lord in Jerusalem. Josiah reinstated Passover. When King Josiah rediscovered the Passover in the Book of the Covenant, he ordered everyone to observe the ceremony exactly as prescribed. This Passover celebrates celebration was to have been a yearly holiday celebration in remembrance of of the entire nation's deliverance from slavery in Egypt. Exodus 12, but it had not been kept for many years. As a result, not since the day of the judges who led Israel, or throughout the days of the kings of Israel and the king of Judah, and any such Passover been observed. It is a common misconception that God is against celebration wanting to take all the fun out of life. In reality, God wants to give us life in fullness. John 10.10 10. And those who love Him have the most to celebrate. So, we should have a big meal on Passover Sunday and have a good time and celebrate it and have communion. Because communion is when we are to have Passover. On Passover Sunday, we are to have communion. So we should celebrate and have a good time. Dress up, look nice, whatever. Celebrate what Christ just did for us. He delivered us from slavery of sin. Passover is connected with Feast of Unleavened bread. Let's take a look at Matthew 26, 
17. Now on the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying to him, Where do you want to prepare for you to eat the Passover? Matthew 26, 17 to 46. Matthew 26, 17 to 46. Now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? 18 And he said, Go, into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand, I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. 19 And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. 20 Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. 21 And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Twenty-two, and they were exceeding sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? Twenty-three, and he answered and said, He, that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Twenty-four, the Son of Man goeth, as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. 25 And Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto them, Thou hast said. 26 And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. 27 And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. 28 For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. 29 But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this root of the vine, until that day, when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. 30 And when they had sung in him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. 31 Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. 32 But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. 33 Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. 34 Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, That is night, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. 35 Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples, 36. Then commanded Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here, while I go, and pray yonder. 37. And he took with him Peter, and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. 38. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death, tarry ye here, and watch with me. 39. And he went a little farther, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless not, as I will, but, as thou wilt. 40. And he commanded unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What, could ye not watch with me one hour? 41. Watch and pray, that ye enter not into temptation, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. 42. He went away again a second time, and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, I will be done. 43. And he came, and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. 
44 and he left them, and went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. 45 Then commanded he to his disciples, and saith unto them, Sleep, I now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. 46 Rise, let us be going, behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. So, each Easter Sunday, Passover Sunday, we should celebrate what Christ has done for us, mill, and take communion. The only feasts, only one of the only of the feasts that take on a new dimension that passes on into the new testament which we call holy communion or the lord's supper because the bread symbolizes the life of god life because christ is the bread of life and the wine symbolizes the new dispensation of the covenant of grace symbolizes Christ's death, burial, and resurrection and ascension in the throne and it's okay to have a yeast in our communion bread now because in the Old Testament the kingdom of God has not yet come but after the New Testament or after the Christ's death, burial, and resurrection but during that time when Christ walked the earth it's okay to have a yeast in bread because that yeast symbolizes the yeast working itself in the bread that rises the bread because it symbolizes the slow, the slow, gradual process of Christianizing the whole entire world, ushering in the golden age of peace and prosperity, Psalm 2, Psalm 22, Psalm 72, through the systematic preaching and teaching of the Word of God. Passover, one day what it celebrates when God spared the lives of our ancestors the, tw the 13 tribes of Israel 13, tri 13 tribes of Israel's firstborn children in Egypt and freed the Hebrews from slavery its importance it reminds people of God's deliverance. Passover, communion, and Lord, the Lord's Supper are connected. Matthew 26, 26. This is out of the New King James. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Jesus is the bread of life. His body symbolizes the life that we receive through the resurrected resurrected Lord of Jesus the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ all the ordinances ceremonial ordinances of the Old Testament has been fulfilled through Christ's death burial and resurrection the only ordinances ordinance so to speak that makes it into the New Testament is 
pass over with a new dimension which we call Holy Communion. Let's turn to Colossians Colossians such and such chapter 2 I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh that their hearts may be encouraged being knitted together in love attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God both of the Father and of Christ in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now this I say, at least anyone should this deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware, at least any cheat you through philosophy, empty deceit, according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not According to Christ, for in him dwell all the fullness of the Godhead, Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and power. In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead, you being dead in your trespasses and uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made a life together with him, having forgiven you of all trespasses, having wiped out the hand wiped out the handwriting of the requirements that was against you which was contrary to us and he has taken it out of the way having nailed it to the cross having disarmed the principalities and powers and made it a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in it so let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding festivals or of new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels. In intruding into those things which he has not seen vainly puffed up by the fleshly mind and not holding fast to the head from whom all the body body nourishes and from together by a joint ligaments and ligaments growing up with the increase that is from God therefore you would die with Christ from the basic princes of the world why as though living in the world do you subject yourself to the regulations do not touch do not taste do not handle which all concern things which 
perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have an importance. Of, these things indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-opposed religion, false humility, and a neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. Each name we use for this sacrament brings out a different dimension to it. It is the Lord's Supper because it commemorates the Passover meal Jesus ate with the disciples. It is the Eucharist Thanksgiving because in it we thank God for Christ's work for us. It is communion because through it we commune with God and with other believers as we eat the bread and drink the wine. We should be quietly reflective as we recall Jesus' death and his promise to come again. Grateful for God's wonderful gifts to us and joyous as we meet with Christ and the body of believers. Mark 1422-25 And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for me. As surely I say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it in the new kingdom of God. The, the new covenant means it's the same covenant, the covenant of grace. It is just another, uh, there's, only, there's only two covenants, the covenant works and the covenant of grace. And this is the same covenant, but this is a new dispensation of the covenant of grace. So we celebrate, when we have communion, we celebrate the new covenant, the new dispensation of the covenant of grace. Mark records The new dimension of the Lord's Supper, also called Communion or Eucharist, Thanksgiving, which is still celebrated in worship services today. Jesus and his disciples ate of Passover meal, the passing of bread, and the drinking of wine gave them new meaning as representatives of his body and blood. He used the bread and wine to explain the significance of what he was about to do on the cross. For more on the significance of the Lord's Supper, take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 to 29. Luke 22, 17 through 20. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God has come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 20. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of my betrayer is with me on the table. It's a symbol of the new dispensation of the covenant of grace.
significance of communion. Christians differ in their interpretation of the meaning of the commemoration of the Lord's Supper. There are three main views. The bread and wine actually become Christ's body and blood. Two, the bread and wine remain unchanged, yet Christ is spiritually present by faith and through them. Three, the bread and wine, which remains unchanged, are are the bread and wine, which remains unchanged, are lasting, memorable of Christ's sacrifice. No matter which view they favor, all Christians agree that the Lord's Supper commemorates Christ's death on the cross for our sins and points to the coming of His kingdom and glory, which when we participate of it, we should show our deeper gratitude for Christ's work on our behalf and our faith is strengthened. Now the first two views, no matter how you look at it, is idolatry. So that's really not the correct way to celebrate communion, but the third view is the correct view. Believing that Christ is, by believing that Christ's body becomes, by believing that the bread becomes Christ's body and blood is making an idol out of the objects and therefore is idolatry by believing that Christ is spiritually present in the bread and the wine still makes an idol out of the body still makes an idol out of the bread and blood and is idolatry so the third view is the correct view Do it in remembrance of what Christ has done for us. Jesus asked the disciples to eat the broken bread in remembrance of me. He wanted them to remember his sacrifice, the basis for forgiveness of sin, and also his friendship that they could continue to enjoy through the work of the Holy Spirit. Although the exact meaning of communion has been strongly debated throughout church history, Christians still take bread and wine in remembrance of their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Do not neglect participating participating in the Lord's Supper. Let it remain remind you of what Christ has did for you. And here we take communion. We have here we have when it come here when we take communion at this ministry we have grape juice and wine. Those who are alcoholics, we have grape juice. Those who are not alcoholics, we have wine. In old times, Old Testament times, God agreed to forgive people's sin if they brought animal sacrifices for the priest to sacrifice. When this sacrificial system was inaugurated, which was the inauguration of the first dispensation of the covenant of grace, the agreement between God and man was sealed with the blood of animals, Exodus 24, 8. But animal blood did not in itself removes sin. Only God can forgive sin and animal sacrifice had to be repeated day by day. Year after year Jesus instituted the instituted a new covenant. Uh, 
the new dispensation of the covenant of grace or agreement between humans and God under the new dispensation of the covenant of grace Jesus would die in the place of sinners and like the blood of animals his blood became his blood because he is God would truly remove sins of all who put their faith in him and Jesus sacrifice would never have to be repeated it would be good for all eternity Hebrews 9 23 to 28 the prophet looked forward to this new dispensation of the covenant of grace that would fulfill the old sacrificial agreement Jeremiah 31 31 to 34 and John the Baptist called Jesus the Lamb of God who take away the sins of the world first John 29 John 129 1 Corinthians 10 verses 16 through 21 the cup of blessings which we bless it is not the communion of the blood of Christ the cup of blessings which we bless is it not the communion of the blood of Christ the bread which we break is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For, for we, being many, are one bread, one body. For we are all participators of that one bread. Behold, Israel, after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifice? Behold, Israel, after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifice? Takers of the altar, what I what say what say I then that that the idol is any thing or that which is offered in sacrifice to an idol is anything, but I say that these things which the Gentiles sacrifice they sacrifice the devils and not to God, and I would not that. And I would not they ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of the devils. Ye cannot be participators of the Lord's table and of the table of the devil. The idea of unity and fellowship with God through eating of the sacrifice was, a, was strong in The idea of unity and fellowship with God through eating a sacrifice was strong in Judaism, Christianity, as well as in paganism. In the Old Testament days, when the twelve tribes of Israel offered a sacrifice, thirteen tribes of Israel offered a sacrifice he ate part of the sacrifice as a way of restoring his unity with God against whom he had sinned Deuteronomy 12 17 to 18 similarly Christians who are descendants Christians participate in Christ's once and for all sacrifice when they eat the bread and drink the wine symbolizing his body and blood recent converts from paganism could not help being affected if they knowingly ate with pagans in their feasts the meat offered to idols as followers of Christ we must give him our total allegiance we cannot as Paul explains have part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. Eating at the Lord's table means communion with Christ and is identifying with his death. Eating the eating the devil's table means identifying with Satan by worshiping or promoting paganism or evil activities. Are you trying to lead Two lies following the desires of both Christ and the 
crowd, the Bible says that you cannot do both at the same time. All Christians should communion allows Christians to participate in Christ's communion. And there's times when we can have and there's times when Christians can have a special communion if they want. How it should be observed, communion. First Corinthians eleven twenty seven wherefore whoever shall eat this bread and drink of this cup Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Paul gives us specific instructions on how the Lord's Supper should be observed. He observed one, we should take the Lord's Supper thoughtfully because we are proclaiming that Christ died for our sins, 1 Corinthians 11, 26. Two, we should take it worthy with due reverence and respect, 1 Corinthians 11, 27. We should examine ourselves for any unconfessed sin or resentful attitude, 1 Corinthians 11, 28. We are to be properly prepared based on our, based on our behalf in and love for Christ. For we should be considerate of others. First Corinthians, First Corinthians 11 33, waiting until everyone is there and then eating in an orderly, unified manner. And so the cool thing about communion is, is you can observe communion special communions if you want. The early church did that, Acts 2.42, but the official date is Passover Sunday. And we are not to take communion in an unworthy manner. Wherefore, whoever shall eat of this blood and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh un unworthy eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's not discerning the Lord's body, for this cause me are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, then we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat tarry for one another and if any man hungry let him eat at home that ye come not together unto condemnation and the rest will I set in order when I come Paul gives specific instructions on how the Lord's Supper should be observed. One, we should take the Lord's Supper thoughtfully because we are proclaiming the, that Christ died for our sins. Two, we should take it 
worthy with due reverence and respect. Three, we should examine ourselves for any unconfessed sin or resentfulness. We are to be properly prepared based on based on our behalf in and love for Christ. Four, we should be considerate of others, waiting until everyone is there, and then eating in an orderly, unified manner. When Paul said that no one should take the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner, he was speaking to the church members who were rushing in without thinking of its meaning. Those who did this, they were guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord instead of honoring his sacrifice. They were sharing in the guilt of those who crucified Christ. In reality, no one is worthy to take the Lord's Supper. We're all sinners saved by grace. This is why we should prepare ourselves for communion through a healthy neutral perspective confession of sin and resolution of differences with others these actions remove the barrier that affects our relationship with Christ and with other believers an unaware an awareness of your sin should not keep you away from communion but we should, but you, uh, but should drive you to participate in it. Without recognizing the body of the Lord's meaning, nor understanding what the Lord's Supper means, and not dis dis distinguishing from distinguishing it from a normal meal, those who do so condemn themselves. In other words, they bring discipline upon themselves from the Lord. Falling asleep is another way of describing death, that some of the people had died. It may have been a special supernatural judgment on the Corinthian church. This type of Disemplary judgment highlights the seriousness of communion services. The Lord's Supper is not to be taken lightly. This new covenant costs Jesus' his life. It is not meaningless ritual, but a sacrament given by Christ to help strengthen our faith. The new dispensation of the covenant of grace. People should come to this mill desiring to fellowship with other believers and prepare for the Lord's Supper to follow, not to fill up on a big dinner. If anyone's hungry, he should eat at home, means that they should eat dinner beforehand, so as to come to fellowship mill in the right frame of mind. So in a moment we'll have communion, but first let's prepare ourselves for communion Shouldn't by internet or someone picked up these sermons in uh, a laundromat or some public place simply get yourself get yourself some bread Get yourself some grape juice or wine. If you're an alcoholic, I suggest grape juice. If you're not, then wine. Get those items in preparation of communion. And after we've prepared ourselves, I'll have communion here on this end with you. We are in church. We are fellowshipping. Dear Heavenly Father, we just repent of all our unconfessed sin. I ask you to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I ask you to open our hearts and minds to your word, your truth, and, and we pray that we 
have communion on a worthy manner. And that our hearts would be prepared and help us to remember what this communion, this Passover Sunday is all about. We repent and ask you to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We ask in Jesus Christ's name, through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So if you will, go get your bread and your, your grape juice, your wine, and let's have communion. Here we are back again, and now we're going to take communion. But first, let us pray. Dear Yahweh, Altonai Elohim, we repent of our sins of omission and commission. We ask you to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pray that you would bless this communion that we are about to take, this holy communion, and help us always to remember the meaning of communion. Anoint them, bless them, and put our minds and our hearts in the right frame of mind of taking communion. We, bre we bless, we anoint this plate of bread. We anoint this glass of grape juice in the name of God the, in the name of God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ's name through the power of the Holy Spirit turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 through 26 we're going to be reading. This is out of the New King James and it reads, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took this bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take Eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Bread of life. Thank you, Father God, for all the great things you've done for us. In the name of the Lord, Jesus Christus, through the power of Hegias Pluma. Verse 25. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper saying this is the cup this cup is the new covenant in my blood this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me verse 26 for, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes Father, we thank you for the new covenant of the, dis the, the new dispensation of the covenant of grace. And thank you, Father. In Christ Jesus' name. Oh, 
God through your Son, you have boasted upon your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new fire and grant that this Passover feast we made so burn with heavenly desires with pure minds we may attain to the festival of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rejoice now, heavenly host, and chorus of angels, and let your triumph shout salvation for the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now, all the all that around around the earth, bright with the glorious splendor, for darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King. Rejoice and be glad now, holy Christian Church. Let your holy court courts and let your holy courts and radiant light resound with the praise of your people all you who stand near this marvelous and holy flame pray with me to God Almighty for the grace to sing the sing the worthy praise of this great light through Jesus Christ his son our Lord who lives and reigns with him in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share in the divine light of him who humbles himself to share our humility. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have placed in the skies the signs of your covenant with all living things. Grant that we, that we who are saved through water and the Spirit may worthy may worthily offer to you our sacrifice of thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through the power of, in the name of Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Ghost, Amen. God and Father of all believers, for the glory of Your name, multiply by the grace of the Paschal Sacrament the number of Your children, that Your church may rejoice to see fulfillment Your promise to our Father Abraham through Jesus Christ, our Lord, through the power, through the. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. O God, whose wonderful deeds of old shines forth even to the even to our own day. You once delivered by the power of your mighty You once delivered by the, the power of your mighty arm your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh to be a sign for us of the salvation of all nations by the water of baptism grant that all the people of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham rejoice in the inheritance of Israel through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray to the power of the Ghost O oh God you led your ancient people by the pillars of clouds by day and the pillars of fire by night grant that we who serve you now on earth may come to the joy of that heavenly Jerusalem where all tears are wiped away where your saints forever sing your praise through Jesus Christ our Lord through the power of the Holy Ghost O God Yahweh Atonai Elohim you have created all things by the power of your word and you renew the earth by your spirit give now the water of life to those who thirst for you that they may bring forth abundance fruits in your gracious kingdom through jesus christ our lord to the power of the holy ghost amen 
almighty and everlasting God, who is the Passover mystery, established the new covenant, the new dispensation of the covenant of grace of reconciliation, that, that all who are reborn into fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through Jesus Christ our Lord, through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear Yahweh, by the Passover of your Son, you have <clears throat> brought us out of sin into righteousness, out of death into light. Grant to those who are sealed by the Holy Spirit the will and the power to proclaim you to all the world through Jesus Christ our Lord through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat> o Elohim of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your holy Christian church. That wonderful and sacred mystery by the effectual working of your providence carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which are cast down are being raised up and things which have grown old are being made new that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made through your son Jesus Christ with the power of the Holy Ghost Amen May, may Almighty God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by the water and the Holy Spirit, and boast upon us the forgiveness of sin, keep us in eternal life by grace, in Jesus Christ's name, through the power of the Holy Ghost. And we give you our Easter vigil, Father God. Almighty God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross and by his gracious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Ghost, Amen. O Yahweh Atonai Elohim, who made, the mo who made this most holy night to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, steer up in your church that spirit of adoption which is given to us in a baptism that we that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity, truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. In Jesus Christ's name we pray through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's take a moment of silence. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to hide these truths in our hearts and minds and empower us to put into practice these truths. We ask in Jesus Christ's name for the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. God bless you. Until next time.